Hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today what I'm going to be looking at is how we go about printing through Capture One. Now, we're all used to printing through the Adobe suite of software, shall we say, like the Photoshops and Lightrooms, but Capture One is a really great alternative and it's one of my favourites to be honest. I do most of my editing now actually in Capture One because it has a fantastic range of tools in there. A lot of the time though I have to say I'm torn between Capture One and Lightroom and it really does come down to personal choice of which one you prefer. But with the latest updates to Capture One it is well worth um, having a look and downloading their free sample and actually having a look at the software and seeing if you prefer it to Adobe as well. The good points of Capture One are the subscription model. You can either do it like Adobe do on a monthly basis or you can just pay it a one-off fee per year or you can actually buy the software outright but if you buy it outright you don't get those updates and the latest versions and things as well so you do have to pay every time you upgrade whereas if you are on the subscription you get the new version they release every year without fail now before we get started as always please don't forget to subscribe to the photo speed youtube channel just click that subscribe button in the bottom right down there and also, please let me know any of your comments as well. And if you use Capture One or had any problems with it as well, or anything on the printing side of things. And also, if you're looking for some paper, please don't forget to use the 15% discount code, as always, which is FSYouTube15. And you can use that on photospeed.com to receive 15% off our range of papers. Okay, so let's get into Capture One and make a start. Now, before I get started, what I want to do is I just want to talk briefly about Capture One and how it has evolved over the years and actually how it wasn't that great at printing a couple of versions ago. And it's why I've put off doing this video, to be honest, and always kind of recommended printing through either Lightroom or Photoshop because every time I printed through Capture One, for some reason, Capture One, now, I never really got to the bottom of this, the why Capture One was doing this, but it wasn't applying the profiles correctly. And I tried different settings. I even spoke to Phase One. I spoke to a few of their photographers as well on kind of different settings and different kind of things we could look at to try and rectify this, but it never really happened. So if I printed off a picture through Photoshop and it was a black and white image, it would look lovely and neutral. Now, when it came out of Capture One, I looked at it and thought, there's something not quite right there. Then I compared it against the version that I printed through, say, Photoshop or Lightroom, and it always came out really blue and really cool. So I always kind of put off printing through Capture One. And actually, I do know photographers that their, that their workflow is still to edit everything in Capture One and then move everything over to Photoshop to print or or Acrobat or something like that, or they have a standalone print program like the Canon Professional Printer Layout Software or the Epson Layout Software. That is another option. However, with this new version 2022, actually 2021 address this, I am finding I'm getting some really nice prints out of Capture One now. I am actually going to compare printing a file through Lightroom and through Capture One to see if there's any difference because actually there shouldn't be. They should be exactly the same. If they're using a profile, it's getting the color information off that profile. So actually they should be exactly the same and we shouldn't really see any difference. And I'm interested to see, um, just to see if uh, phase one have actually kind of sorted these problems out, shall we say. Okay, so let's get into capture one and we'll start editing this picture. Okay, so I have one of my pictures up here, which was uh, shot up into some trees, a nice black and white. Now, the first thing I've done is just edit this picture. Now, this is the same kind of editing process if you're in Lightroom or Capture One. Um, the only difference I found really with Capture One is the sliders are on the left instead of the right. So a lot of the things that we have within Lightroom, if you're ever used to that, then we have in Capture One as well. But we have a little bit more control, I think, arguably. Um, 
does the slider seem a little bit more responsive? So I have noticed when I've gone backwards and forwards between Lightroom and Capture One for work and things that the sliders are different. So you move the black slider in Lightroom and it does, it affects the picture in one way. You move the black slider in Capture One and it affects it in another or differently, or you have to do more of the slider and things. So they've got different tolerances basically on these sliders. But to convert to black and white, I simply just select the enable black and white mode. And then I can just roll down and across the top here, we can just go across and do our edits here. So the first one we have is how the picture looks like the crop and the angle and things. The next one is the color. So we've got black and white color balance and things in here. And then the next one over is pretty much looks like the kind of the basic develop tab of in Lightroom. So we've got our exposure, contrast, brightness and saturation, black points and things in here and clarities. And we've also got our curve here. Now you'll see I've put quite a dramatic curve in here. So that's hence why I like this kind of contrast look in my work. The next one across, we have the sharpening menu. Again, very similar to Lightroom in the sliders we have in Luminance. Now I'm going through this quite quickly as kind of an overview. Um, the best thing to do is actually play with the software. And I'm not gonna go into the detail of kind of editing and how we go into all that in Capture One because it's quite an in-depth kind of talk through that. I am looking to do some more videos on Capture One though, so I will be posting those, but there is also some amazing content out there on YouTube and things um, on Capture One. The best thing to do if you want to give Capture One a try is to download their free trial and just have a play with it. That's the best way to learn some software. Have a play. See if you can just kind of match up what you're getting in kind of Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever you're using and just have a play with it because it's well worth it. It's well worth having a try. So within this sharpening menu also, we've got grain types as well. What Capture One does really well is grain. It, if you want that film look to your pictures, which I kind of add in because it hides a bit of the artifacts that carry on, that kind of happen in my work, um, it does it really well. And if you've got a Fuji camera, it links up as well with all the F Fuji film types and things, fantastic. Okay, so the next one we're interested in though, as we go along, we've kind of got a metadata um, menu here, uh, styles and presets, we can just put in our own styles and things in there. The next one we've got is kind of what, what they call uh, recipes or the process recipes, shall we say. Now this is where you can apply um, profiles for soft proofing and you can also export that file to a JPEG or TIFF, however you want to export that. So you could take it into your Epson layout software or your Canon layout software, etc. Now, if you're used to Lightroom, you've got that print tab, which brings up all those options for you. In Capture One, it's slightly different, shall I say. You just have to go to File and Print like you do in Photoshop. So let's just do that and I'll show you the print menu. So I'll just go down to File and Print. And then what happens is we bring up another box, which looks, I have to say, very similar to Adobe's um, Lightroom print module. So at the top here, we have our, say our resolution, we're gonna be working with. Then we've got our print sharpening. Then we've got our color profile in here, which we can apply. Then we've also got our rendering intent and black point compensation. Then underneath it, we've got page setup and print settings. So I'm just gonna go page setup, and then we're just gonna go down. I'm actually gonna do an A3 print. So I'm just gonna click on A3. Now I'm on a Mac here. This will be quite similar on a PC as well. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is just go into the print settings and I need to in here select my media type. And if you're on a PC, this is where you need to turn off your color management as well. So I'm just going to quality of media. I'm going to turn off black and white photo print because I'm going to be printing with a profile in this case. So I've got the, the photo paper plus semi gloss selected because I'm going to be printing on the platinum gloss art fiber. And I'm just going to click save there. 
Okay, and then we just carry on down, working down. This is where Capture One is quite good because you just work down. It's quite methodical and kind of makes sense that you just work along doing things like you do the crop, then you do the color, then exposures and contrasts and levels and things. Then you do the sharpening and the grain and things. It works very nicely, it flows very nicely. So in here, we can set a template as well, but I'm just going to go for full page. We can set our margins as well. As you can see here, I've set the 1.5 centimeter margins and anything that will be a margin will be just be set out in gray here. Um, we can put rows and columns. So if you want to do test charts and things um, like contact sheets and things like that, you can. Um, the cell size and width. Now this works a little bit differently if you're used to working in Lightroom. In Lightroom, what you would do is the cell size, you would maximize and then it takes the margin away from that. What Capture One does, if you maximize this cell size like I do now, you'll see my picture goes basically to the edges of the page because I'm not printing borderless here and the margins change. But then when I put back in those margins of 1.5 centimeters or 15 mil, then you'll see my cell size is moving as well just down, down the bottom here. Now, that took me a little bit of confusion to start with. It took me a few minutes to get my head around that one because um, I was thinking, well, I need to maximize those cell sizes because that's what I do in Lightroom. Well, in here, we just need to set those margins. And then we've got zoom to fill. So we can fill that page like we do in like Lightroom or Photoshop. Um, and we've also got rotate as well. So I always have rotate to fill because it will rotate it for me. The other thing is we've got captions in here and watermarks etc. Now once we've got all that set up the only thing left to do is to click print and then what we'll do is we'll have a look and see what we've got. Okay, so now they're all printed off. Here is the Capture One print. Now, it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy with the way it's come out. I think the paper choice of that platinum gloss art fine was just perfect for it. Just really helped with the grain and the greys up here as well. Really good choice of paper, I have to say. Now, I've also done this print on Lightroom as well, just to see if there is any difference. Now, this print, I have to say, I can't really see a lot of difference. Um, if I put them side by side, there is very little difference in here. I think that they're both doing what they should be doing. Um, they're both printing a lovely neutral black and white print. If you use the printer's black and white mode, of course, then these will be absolutely identical. And I think they are, they're pretty much there. I would say if I was being really, really picky, I'm just looking at them now again, that I would say possibly the Lightroom is a little bit more neutral, but it's, I mean, I'm kind of splitting hairs. I, I, I don't know if my, uh, my eyes are just starting to see things because I'm looking for those changes now. But if I look at the Capture One print away from everything, I mean, it looks absolutely spot on to me. I don't really see any problems there. Now, I hope that's been useful. Like I said, Capture One is really simple. It is just file and then print and then working down those options within the print dialog box. It takes a little time just to have a fiddle around with it and just get your head around kind of what's happening. but best thing to do is, like I said, have a play with it. And if you haven't used Capture One before, it's well worth a look. Um, download the free trial, like I said, from the Capture One website. You might just go back to Lightroom. That's absolutely fine. Both are amazing programs. They're just slightly different in the way they get to that final outcome. And like I said, both of these prints, I have to say, are pretty identical, to be honest, printing through either. If I'd exported and printed it through the like the professional print and layout from Canon or the Epson layout software, they'd be absolutely identical. So there is a little bit of kind of personal preference, should I say, involved in that. Okay.
So please don't forget to subscribe to the video as always. And also please don't forget to use that voucher code that gives you 15% off PhotoSpeed papers on the PhotoSpeed website. And that voucher is FSYouTube15. So until next time, bye-bye.